شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونسلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Well, the month of Ramadan is finally here. This month we've been anticipating has arrived. So Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. And I pray that we can get through this month in a way that we can make the most of this blessed month of Ramadan. In this video, I want to focus on just one word that appears in the first chapter of the Quran, Al-Fatiha. Fatiha comes from the word Fataha, uh, which means to open. And then you have uh, various ways that word is deployed and used in the Quran and in Arabic. So you have books like Mafatih al Ghaib of Imam Razi. Uh, Mafatih comes from the word Fataha, Fatiha, which means here Mafatih al Ghaib, the keys to the unseen. Uh, it's a wonderful book. I have it as a book that I read regularly by Imam Razi, a wonderful polymath, a genius of our tradition. Um, so this word is used a lot in titles of books as well. We also have the word futuhat, uh, which means openings. In a spiritual sense, it's an opening where a person is now connected with their creator or they have moments during their life or their days where they have this overwhelming experience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also use it in a more uh, mundane sense when Allah gives us success. So when Allah gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam success uh, when Mecca was taken by the Muslims, Fatah. Uh, in fact, in the Quran, Allah mentions this, inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. So this opening in the Quran is also mentioned. So this is a very important word. And this is why it's called Surah Al-Fatiha because it's the opening of the Quran. It's how you enter the Quran. Everything has an adab, a way of doing things, a propriety. And so when you enter someone's house, there's a way of entering their home. When you enter the masjid, there's a way of entering the masjid. Everything in Islam has its peculiarities in how we do go about and do that particular act as well. So when we read the Quran, we want Allah, we ask Allah to open up the Qur'an for us because we are the ones that are in need of opening. Right? We live a very closed life, a dark life, a very constricted life. And the words of Allah, the Kalamullah, which are very powerful, um, are a way of opening us to divine revelation. So we begin with Surah Al-Fatiha. This, of course, we recite it as the jurists, the fuqaha, remind us in every unit of prayer, every rak'at of prayer, begins with the Fatiha, which is a very interesting surah because it has a combination of supplication, of protection from certain things, and also a request from Allah to guide us to the straight path. But the word I really want to focus on is the word Rabb. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to the word Rabb, uh, Lord of the entire universe. A very difficult word to translate simply across into English. But I've chosen the word Lord. And the word Rabb essentially means someone who does the tarbiyah, someone who looks after something from the beginning all the way till the end. Uh, if you think about a gardener who plants a seed um, in um, the end of autumn, for example, and then make sure it's ready for spring and then, then takes care of the plant as it grows and it grows and provides it with water, protects it from animals, does everything that's necessary for that plant or that tree to reach its uh, fullness. And so this is what Allah does with us. It's very, very fascinating because the uh, metaphor of nature is powerful, especially as we are now in the month or in the season of spring. So Allah, our creator, is the one who does our tarbiyah. He makes sure that from every perspective, we are able to reach our fullness. And he provides us with food and the necessary requirements so that we can reach our physical um, fullness, but also our spiritual fullness. The month of Ramadan is an opportunity for us to really reach um, the 
epitome of our tarbiyah, which is to correct to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have this word Rabb. And the word Rabb, in an absolute sense, is only used for Allah. Allah is the only Rabb. When you use it in a relative sense, when you say that um, Harun is the Rabb of the house, then it's fine. You can use that. Rabb dar He is the Rabb of the house because he's taking care of the home. The father is the one that's taking care of the home. Or the mother is the one that's taking care of the home. But the Rabb in the absolute sense is only for Allah because truly, essentially, he is the one that takes care of everything. He makes sure that all our needs are fulfilled um, throughout our entire life. And when we pass away from this world, our soul is taken away and we are resurrected once again to meet him. We are again in need of him. So he is always doing our tarbiyah. He is always looking after uh, our needs. So this is very, very important. And it goes back to a fundamental theological point, which is that we believe as Muslims um, that all our needs, everything that's in existence, everything that exists is utterly in need of Allah. Everything is utterly dependent on Allah as for its fulfillment. And Allah Himself is completely independent, a summit. He doesn't need anybody, doesn't need anyone, doesn't need food, doesn't need friendship, doesn't need all of these things that we often crave for, doesn't need any of these things. Allah is completely independent. And so it is to Him that we should really turn to in this blessed month as we enter this month and we begin to fast and we strive to please our Creator. I hope that's been useful. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.